Hello, I'm back with another Wear In Burden. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stage. And today for Wear In Burden, we are in November 2015. Now, why did I pick this particular issue? I have a lot of love for this issue because it was one of the first burdens that I bought to sew for myself. And I traced a ton of patterns from this issue and I think I only made two items from it but I traced so many things um there used to be a point where when I would get the magazine I would just furiously dive into tracing the patterns and be like oh I like this one I want to trace it I want to like this one I'll trace it and I'll trace it but of course the reality is that you know that process didn't quite work for me because I ended up with loads more traced patterns that never got realized because after I'd finished tracing the patterns it was almost as if I closed the loop because I wouldn't have spent too much time thinking about well where am I going to be wearing this garment once I make it what fabric am I going to use for this do I even have the fabric for it I just thought oh I'll sort that stuff out um down the line I was still a summer baby when it came to sewing I was very new to the world of sewing and the wonderful world of burda and so yeah it's really quite funny so every time i get this uh, every time i look at this issue i'm just reminded of that time that optimistic time that i used to think that it would be possible to sew everything every single tiny little vision idea that came into my head i'd be able to sew it because it is a it is a wonderful phase of the sewing journey i think so this is what we have. Let's see if we'll get into it. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you some sartorial wisdom. I really feel like I've been on a journey learning about style and personal style, fashion versus style, etc. And so I have a commonplace book. Well, I've had this for nearly two years now. And basically it means that whenever I'm reading around stuff and I come across something that I consider to be, oh my days, that's like such an insightful thing. I will write it down in here. So this one um, basically is about the difference between fashion and style. And for me, it really encapsulated what the difference is between fashion and style. And basically it says, fashion fades, only style remains. Fashion is a cult, style is a philosophy. Fashion mocks individuality, style celebrates it. Fashion can be bought style must be possessed and I just that was whoosh, mind blowing for me because I think in just those couple of um, sentences it encapsulates how so there were some people that I would see incredibly wealthy wealthy people who have all the money to have the personal stylist to have the hairstylist the personal trainers etc and they're able to get access to the most exclusive boutiques hot couture and what have you and you'll see them dressed in something that you just think Really? All that money that you have, that's what it looks like. And then when you see the insane price tags on some of the garments that they wear, like an outfit might be totaling something like 350000 And you think 350000 you could buy 10 houses in the north of England with that. And somebody's wearing that as clothes and that is what it looks like. You know, so it kind of really got me so, so that's when I was like, oh, okay, so there's fashion and then there's style. So there are just some people that um, don't have style because they just have the, you know, the money. And it's not about having money because people can be stylish, very, very stylish without having um I thought this was quite cool and hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of sartorial wisdom. All right, let's move in and see what was what in 2015. Okay, so one thing that I do want to note is how accurate this is. I love that in 2015, Berta was actually saying very accurately how many patterns you could expect to get in an issue. So 18 free patterns, 58 different styles, yep, because separates when you combine them in different ways. And $69, uh, 69 euros for the price of $4.99. So yeah, this is fantastic. Good stuff. Wish they stayed with that actually. So here we go. This issue had so many styles. You get all of that and you had all of this. So this oversized coat, you see these so many places on the high street right now with this statement collar over here. Beautiful tailoring. Okay, so this is 
uh, pattern number one that I traced. I absolutely loved the high funnel neck on here. I liked the idea of the French darts. And of course, it looks magnificent on her because she's got the body shape for it, the body type for it. Um, it wouldn't work so much on a person like me. And thankfully, I never got around to making it. But one of the things that did put me off of making it at the time was I couldn't reconcile the idea of having a zipper here around the nape of my neck. I also traced this one out because I thought this would be a lovely summer easy wear garment. Okay, so this outfit combo, <laughs> I was actually quite enchanted by it. I liked the idea of the swishy skirt. So actually I traced out the skirt as well. I particularly liked the black and white version, which we'll come to next as well as i i also had some ideas that i was going to make this top in a wool jersey because i thought it was quite nice that they used a contrast trim for the zipper here right um but with this one one of the reasons why i'm so glad i didn't make it is that actually looking at the style lines it's got literally an arrow that points right there and some of these things you know i think you gotta think in terms of you know long term where are your seam lines directing the eye, so to speak? <laughs> and you'll see that particularly in the one that's in contrasting colors. And then we had a poncho here that I absolutely loved. But at the time, 2015, I still had four of my kids were under, I had four under three at that time. I was breastfeeding my twins. So I needed things that were a lot more practical than capes. Although I still did trace this because I thought, oh, I could wear that when I'm not actually needing to. Okay, and then there were these trousers here that I really liked and I traced them because, again, they look so fabulous on the model. But, you know, gamines and these kick flares, it's, it's a little bit of a dicey area. But I traced them and I still have the traced pattern for that. And you have this really lovely, gigantic, cozy looking cardigan. Again, I'm seeing a lot of stuff like this in the shops. More oversized looks. A DIY section on adding blanket stitch to just give it a little bit of vava voom. Oh, and then there was this romantic section. I loved this. I traced this dress out because one of the most um, heart-wrenching things that I realized when I would try to dress in romantic styles is how they just didn't work with me in principle. Like I just, I didn't feel as good as I thought I should when I'd be wearing them. But now that I've learned a lot about the Kibi image IDs and about creating harmony, I understand now why they weren't working for me. But this is like a really lovely, lovely section. And then here, this belt adds just some lovely waist emphasis on this lovely print. Lovely print over there. Okay, and there's those trousers again. And this time they've got a double panel of buttons to give them almost like the sailor trouser look. And we've got simple top with some tie details. And there's that. So before this was made into a top and now it's been made into a dress. And there's those trousers. And as you can see, they look fabulous on this model because um, she's got like the theatricality going to it. And she's very tall. It's got legs for ages, you know, and they're quite high-waisted, which is suitable for that sort of frame. No wonder I never made them. Little bolero. And I still contend that this is not an appropriate autumn dress because there's just too much skin. Um summer this is a summer dress and again some more luxurious romantic loveliness and i like to think that they had the apples in there as a little nod to snow white and the seven dwarves okay and then this is the black and white section okay so here's that skirt again but this time it's in a contrasting fabric and as i say to the seam lines right they kind of you know, they draw the eye because when, when an outfit is being created, right, 
you always have to think about where, where is the eye going to rest on. So that's why if you have too much stuff going on, it doesn't look quite harmonious because the eye doesn't know where to rest on. And so you tend to need to pick out what your statement piece is rather than having loads of statement pieces. And ultimately, you want to create harmony. So like when I see these design lines, right, and particularly here in the contrasting fabric, you kind of think, oh, okay, what's well, so, 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 so it pointing to? <laughs> you know, I just kind of think like it detracts from the rest of the elegance of this. Like this would have been so much better um, as black. And I think you can create this same sort of silhouette without necessarily having those lines. But that's just a mini nitpicking run. Oh, and then we've got that lovely romantic dress, but we've removed the little cap sleeves. And yeah, so I, I also traced this version of the top as well, because I, I could see myself wearing this for uh, summer. And I still think that this sort of style could still work on me because it is sleeveless and it's quite strappy over here and it's got the waist definition. But I never got around to making this. I never got around to making this. Now we've got that tunic made into a tunic top with an extra, extra, extra long vent. Why? I was surprisingly taken by this. I don't remember noticing this the first time that I got this issue. It wasn't something that necessarily caught my eye. It's something that I wanted to make. But I was strangely taken by this. I thought that this would look very nice, especially with a tie belt. And in the fabric that they have used here, it's got a lot more structure. So it's giving it a nice crispness to it those lovely sailor trousers again and then we've got this funnel neck top with the zipper i also traced out the top pattern itself which is so crazy because in winter i just do not wear things that are sleeveless and i just think what was i thinking tell me this doesn't remind you of a hot water bottle you know how he's got the tie thingy <laughs> looks good Okay, so there's some interesting contrasting that I can get behind, can get behind this. So it's that oversized look again, which we also see currently in the high lace dress. Okay, let's have a look at the line drawings. So we can see on here that this is basically the same pattern pieces, but you're getting three sorts of styles. And here and over there. So definitely more variations on the same thing, as you can see, more variations. And by 2015, we're beginning to sort of see less of the wide range. And there we go. The cape in black and red, if you want to dress up as Cruella de Vil. And then there's this uh, dress. Thing, which is two pieces of fabric just show, sewn together there and then you just kind of just let it flap flap around <laughs> in the club going to the club very simple top top and this is the cover design with the white shawl collar okay given that this is a november issue each time i see this i just i feel cold i feel i feel cold even at the time that I bought this and I was a baby seamstress, I seem to remember thinking that this was a terrible fabric choice for this, especially given the minimal gathering that it has. It's just so... Mm. Yeah, I, I remember thinking that this didn't work quite. Okay, so we've got that dress again. And actually, it's got a bit more shaping. And I think it's made in a jersey. This is sequined jersey. And then you just have the sort of the flutter sleeves. Hmm, interesting. I can tell that this looks like it would be very comfortable, though, for a night out. So you're getting all the shimmer and the shine, but you've got the comfort of the stretchiness of the jersey. Mm. So she's wearing navy trousers and black. I always thought it was a thing that never wear navy and black together. Because you're supposed to look like a bruise or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But um, we've got that concept again of these simple jersey dresses with a bit of shaping. And this is off shoulder. And it's as if you were doing a quarter circle in order to create this detail. Now, I think as far as plus sizes in any issue go, this 92015 has to be the best 
one is it just got some lovely dresses so first of all we've got like this 1940s style um dress with the beret the styling is just so spot on everything about this is lovely okay so as you can see there those are the details of the dress really let me show you there you go look at that bust shaping and you've got some shaping included over here shirt dress with a nice pussy bow uh, draw and bracelet uh, length sorry three quarter length sleeves really fabulous and then we have this lovely wool coat which they've done in an olive so very reminiscent of the land girls of the you know the the whole world war ii post-war outfits garments good stuff and then you've got a fabulous looking two-piece suit as well here with the belt and then that dress has been made into a top, relatively decent. And then you've got this sheath dress with some rah-rah details on the side, which just add a lot more dynamic movement to it. Quite like it. And really nice neckline as well. You can see that neckline is very nice. And then you have some culottes. And then we've got that jacket. Again, the coat again. A really lovely structured shirt with a nice uh, flap pockets over here really well done and we've got the pencil skirt with um, a drape on the side which again just adds this lovely movement this dynamic movement ah and then the kids section on this one i actually traced out this top to make for my kiddies and i made it a couple of times but i wasn't too keen on how it fit around the arms and there were also some leggings that i did make for them as well the Christmas section so all these crafts you can make so that's been birthday 11 2015 an issue that always warms my heart and I think that this is one of those issues that if there even comes a time where I have to clear out my magazines I'll probably hang on to this one because I just have really good vibes and good feelings from uh, this issue. So I think that I would definitely go back and look at the strapless dress. I still think that that would fit me and it would fit my lifestyle because that's one of the things that I've ha I had to learn throughout my journey of sewing is to actually think about my lifestyle rather than sewing for an aspirational lifestyle or a dream lifestyle that doesn't actually exist to sew things that actually work like for instance we have this south bank um, sweater dress this Nina Lee I wear this so much like in winter it is in constant rotation and in fact I have plans to make another one but you know that's that's what you gotta do um, when you're sewing so anyway have you done anything from this 10 2015 issue let me know in the comments down uh, below and until I see you next time lovelies happy sewing and I wish you blue skies health and happiness Bye.